it's not a blowy day in Bangor for once, it's more of a freezing cool day in Bangor. And the upshot of that little manoeuvre is that we could do with some diesel for the heating system. Now, the diesel dock is just over there. It must be all of, oh, I don't know, 50 metres away, if that. But the problem is that to get to it by foot, we've got to go way up, round, up and about, through the building, up toward, through the car park, round, back down, through the harbour. And it's a fair old trek with a big um, can of diesel. And, you know, it weighs a lot. But there is another option. If we could go from here to there, it's very short. And that means going in water. Now, we could move the boat, but it's a lot of things just to move to get a bit of diesel. So what we're going to do instead is kill two birds with one stone. Now, our dinghy motor, which is over here behind me, has not been used for several months. And if you leave petrol in a dinghy motor, I'm told it gets gummy, horrible, sticky, it separates, it blocks up the carburetor jets. Some people advise running the dinghy motor until it's empty. And I've heard other people say, don't do that because the last few drops going through just stuff up the carburetor and it, it doesn't do the cylinders any good. And I don't know the truth of it. I'm not a mechanic, so, you know, it is what it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort my problem out by putting fresh fuel in the dinghy which motor, which means that I've got to get rid of the old fuel in the dinghy motor, which means I'm going to drop the dinghy, put the motor on the back and motor right round the whole marina to the fuel dock and then back over here again. And then we'll top it up with fresh fuel. And also it gets the engine a run out, make sure that the oil is circulated and all the other bits and bobs that engines like to have done to keep them in tip top shape. So with all that, the first job is to get the dinghy off the foredeck into the water, put it over there, then we can put the engine on it. So <laughs> it's a lot of work just to go a few meters. It would be a lot less work just to walk there. It's more fun this way, so I'm going to do it. something that was free um, I think uh, Beverly and I are going to be able to do something with this haven't quite sussed it out yet but uh, you know me nothing ventured nothing gained we don't have a pole for this but I don't know if we need one I've no idea either but um, at the end of the day Bev if we can get a sale for a bit of labour <laughs> you know I'd love it well, Beverly and I are very encouraged. Uh, the sail is in a a lot better condition than we thought it would be. Um, you know, because it's been in the Viva for over a year now, um, and um, I think I can do it. Um, but what I'm going to start off first with is giving it a damn decent wash, because boy, is it frowsy. Well, the sewing machine is um, out in force again, my Toyota. Um, and um, I've just done the clock covers to, for the lines. Uh, a pair of jeans, obviously, the, these are Bev's jeans, which she's uh, wrecked. Um, I know, I'm running around my knickers now because I've no jeans left. <laughs> I know, she needs to go and do some shopping. Um, they last about a, a year, so... You've seen me do those to get before. And I've also made an extension for our extension. <laughs> so all I've done is actually I've spent some of our uh, Kofi money and I've bought some grommets. So I'm hoping to 
be able to sort out my extension for my extension. Make it even bigger. so excited i've just finished um uh my, my sale uh repairs uh so what i've done is uh, i've added tape to the bottom all of it and i've put some tape up the side and then i've got the fingers so that um you know my new attachment is very well secured um in around this area i will have to hand sew um but we're talking oh i don't know eight layers of fabric so uh my machine is giving up on that so i will have to hand sew here but oh i just want to see the sail up um oh, i'm just looking forward to it i just hope to goodness my repairs actually uh work and we have a downwind sail well, thank you, coffee supporters. Um, we had to send back uh, the camera um, that you bought because it wasn't as advertised. So we had to spend a bit more of your money uh, to get a better camera. Um, but uh, we also bought a GoPro mount. So um, this is for the camera uh, just when we can talk to the camera. But also, because this is in here, we can swap it out and um, we can put it out over the boat or something like that. We haven't quite sussed out how we're going to all use it all. But thank you, copy supporters, for Blackie. So now we have Blackie, Brownie and Pengy Cam. So those are our cameras. And we've got the yellow one. Oh, yes, we have our yellow camera, which was our very first camera. So, of course, and of course, the... Um, mobile phones mobile phones so <laughs> our camera equipment is ex expanding um still less than a thousand for the lot probably even less than 500, 500 think, i'd yeah. have thought yeah, and that includes all the mounts and stuff we've bought so you know yes we are on still on a shoestring but we're still hopefully making good videos for you lot so then, day 3096 of the SEAL project, how are we doing? Uh, well, I finished the sale and um, I then found uh, one of our subscribers gave us this interesting, it's kind of like a snuffer thing, but it's far too short. Um, so I've made it, it's, I've made it into a snuffer, the fabric that he gave me. Um, and then I've added a channel um, to it so that my ropes can go up and down uh, the channel to sort of like um, make it into a snuffer. Uh, but it's too short and it's short by quite a bit. So I'm just sort of like sorting it all out as to what the heck I'm going to do. I don't think the shortness is an issue because I think that once you've taken the belly out of the seal, it's effectively dead. Exactly. So we've got to sort it out. So what I'm going to do is, um, and we're going to experiment outside, is I'm going to attach uh, this um, webbing to my sock on the opposite side of where my channel is so that the ropes will be going up the channel. This will be in the sock. I've got these frictionless rings. I've got some big ones somewhere. It's vanished. I've got a big frictionless ring. Ah, here it is, the big frictionless ring. It's been carefully whipped on with duct tape. Oh, yeah, carefully whipped on with duct tape. So I'm going to actually use the webbing around the outside rather than this. So rather than this rope, we're going to have the webbing. But they're made for, they're made for rope, so they can't slip out. Ah. Oh. Well, I suppose, but I was just thinking that if I had the duct tape round there, I can still have the rope. We won't be using duct tape, we'll lash it. Sorry, not duct tape. <laughs> I can still have this webbing. 
like so and then the rope can go around the outside if that's what Bevy wants. I'm not even going to try and talk you out of it, I'm just going to wait and see what happens. <laughs> you can tell that this is like... Because I think that's a disaster but we'll do it anyway. Okay. It'll, it'll make great video. <laughs> And then you can do that Japanese game show thing where you apologise profusely and explain why your plans didn't work. Yeah, but you can see that we're sort of like, ideas are coming around and we're trying different ideas. And that's what life's like uh, when you haven't a clue what you're doing. <laughs> you try things out and that's what we're doing at the moment. We're in the suck it into see part of the process it's never stopped us before absolutely and it won't stop us in the future and it's not stopping us now <laughs> it's off to boost and bobs then absolutely can't wait One of the things I've done is, um, out of spare fabric, I've made a cruising chute bag and um, I need to be able to haul the bag up and down. Now, I can either choose this, which is uh, 60p, or I can, per metre this is, or this one, which is a little bit thicker, which is 70p a metre. But realistically, what I need is something that's not going to slip through my hands. And I think this will just slip too much, whereas this one, I'm going to be able to get a good grip of it. And um, I think, what the heck, I'm going to go for this. Well, I'm finally done with my sail project. Because um, we've made it out of um, spare stuff from other people. It's a bit of a hodgepodge. But... This um, little contraption up here is my pride and joy. So uh, I'm going to put a blog out to show you the diagrams because quite frankly, it had Beverly's head spinning. It was ridiculous. She's like, I'm leaving this in your capable hands. I haven't a clue what you're doing. <laughs> but I've got a um, frictionless lit ring and um, I've actually got the cruising chute lower down um, than the top of the sail purely because the cruising chute I managed to find is too short of my already uh, sail. So what I've done is I've brought it down so that it reduces more of the belly of the sail. So I've got a little contraption up there. Um, but I'm so pleased and I cannot wait for a really nice calm day that we can go out onto the lock and practice because quite frankly Beverly and I have never I've never really done a, a user cruising shoot and uh, you know we'd like to go out there and give it a try but for now I'm really pleased <laughs> The problem we have today is the wind is coming from you toward us so it blows it back onto the mast. But hopefully uh, when we get it up and we... <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to that day but uh, at least now I have a cruising shoe. Yay! Yay! Thank you. 